Hey, a pleasant good day, everybody. A pleasant good afternoon. This is Sports Fanatic News. I'm Joe Borg, a.k.a. Pro Joe, and this is going to be a preview to the Philly and New York Mets series. This is going to be how normally when Andrew can join me, Andrew and I are going to be doing a previewing series and then recapping series since that's just easier to do and more efficient to do because you get a little bit more information and a little bit, hopefully, more reaction over time in the comments since it's recapping and previewing an entire series tilt. That's also what I'm going to do, weekly recaps as well as previews for the Flyers usually in one video, as well as our Lehigh Valley fans that are going to be coming out right after this video for my hockey fans as well. As for today's game, are Philadelphia Phillies playing tonight at 7.05 at Citizens Bank Park against the New York Mets in Philadelphia, have already released the lineup. They're going to have go against one of the best, if not, I would say the best in baseball pitcher, Jacob DeGrum uh, for the New York Mets, um, and we have Matt Moore going. This just ended up happening simply because of the Scherzer and DeGrom matchup that was supposed to be one of the higher-ranked matchups of opening day did not happen due to the Nationals' bouts with uh, COVID and the COVID protocol. Um, So now the Mets have their ace going up against the Phillies' four starter. There's really nothing you can do about that. Obviously, matchup-wise, this heftily uh, favors the Mets coming into this game. But also, we have to remember the Mets did not play um, their any of their games yet, so they haven't played since spring training. At least the Phillies have some swings under their belt. Their pitchers have their some of their pitchers that pitched in the first series have their arms loose under the belt, which are all their key guys in the Alvarados. The nearest who I would imagine has to be off tonight. The Bradleys of the world, all those guys that were able to pitch out of the pen, Brogdon. Um, so you got guys ready and loose. Well, the Mets don't have that at all. They been able to do was practice a little bit and that's obviously not the same even if you ran sim games in practice I'm not sure if they did or not but if they did that's still not the same thing but obviously matchup wise DeGrom's going to be coming in fire and uh, he's one of those guys that he throws 100 and like Kevin Millar always says it looks like he throws 132 so I mean he's a guy that's going to come out there and just be nasty Matt Moore was great in Japan um, he's going to have to It's hard to match Jacob DeGrom, but he's going to have to obviously have a game. Like, he's capable of having, if he does what he did in spring training, minus his uh, last few starts, which is a good thing. Sometimes it's good to have a couple off starts in spring because it gets you in that mentality to kind of bounce back before the season starts instead of having that happen in the first game of the season. He looked really good, um, his numbers-wise, coming over from Japan and some highlights he were able to find. Online, he looked like he was able to control himself better over there. Hopefully, come back over. This guy was once a top prospect, ranked ahead of Mike Trout, of all people, when he was ranked. Um, so he's a guy that if he found it, he might be able to come in and be a very competitive fourth uh, starter. And then you got Chase Anderson uh, as the fifth starter. But the lineup that's going to be facing Jacob DeGrom for the Phillies in Game 1 is going to be Andrew McCutcheon, Reese Hoskins, Bryce Harper, JT Romuto back at the cleanup spot, Alec Bohm at the fifth spot, Didi Gregorius at short, um, Gene Segura at second, and Adam Hazley back in center field. Uh, Hazley sitting 400, looking good this season. It seems like uh, Girardi's leaning towards him as the starter and was very happy when he was back at the end of spring training, um, just going off of all the uh, interviews they had in those fourth innings and then on MLB.tv and MLB.com as well. That just seemed like uh, the vibe when it went to Adam Hazley. So it's good to have him back. The Mets have not released their lineup going up against Matt Moore yet, but obviously Matt Moore's going to have to come out, have a game that he only gives up if he, um, it would be great for him to give up three or less, but if you're able to give up three to four runs and the Phillies are able to do what they did in the first series against the Braves and just kind of let pitchers, Freed's one of the best pitchers in the game too, be it he's obviously young and not as much experience, but uh, he's one of the best pitchers in the game as well as Anderson, and if you're able to kind of get these guys going, get them throwing a lot of pitches, you're forcing them out of the game early. DeGrom's not usually a guy that's as easy to do that with. It's easier said than done, but if the Phillies can do that and more only gives up four or less runs, they'll very much be in this game uh, once it gets to the Mets um, bullpen. But obviously, when you have a lefty on the mound, you really much so have to watch the Pete Alonso as of the world, and then Frenchie Lindor, who's great against either side, but you really got to watch J.D. Davis and Pete Alonzo with a lefty on the mound because those guys absolutely bombard and feast on lefties. But that was the first game. That's going to be more against Jacob DeGrom uh, previewing this series. Obviously, 
the Mets have the advantage of the matchup. I think this is a game that's honestly too hard to predict the winner. I think it's really 50-50 because, yes, the Mets have the hefty advantage in the pitching matchup, but the Mets haven't played since spring training. The Phillies have been uh, playing and have their swings churning and their pitchers churning. So I think that's partially an advantage there. Will the Mets have the advantage of obviously having very fresh legs under them but, all, but just not having the effect of having being in game shape yet because they haven't even played. So I think that game's almost a 50-50 split. That's a toss-up. For me, what's going to happen in the first game, and if the Phillies lose, I'm not going to be mad at all because of what I just said. The pitching matchup heavily favors the Mets, but I think it's 50-50 just because the Phillies have the advantage of actually playing some baseball to the Mets not even playing any baseball yet. Uh, when we look for Tuesday, let's have a quote on MLB.com. There were some that it seemed like the Phillies weren't going to go to a fifth starter right away. But it seems like Joe Girardi is going to do that, according to MLB.com. It has for Tuesday's game tomorrow, April 6th, at 7.05 p.m. at Citizens Bank Park, Marcus Stroman versus Chase Anderson. Uh, Stroh, of course, didn't pitch last season, so it's going to be interesting what he's able to do after coming back. And Chase Anderson did pitch last season, had an off season after looking really solid in 2019. So if he's able to pitch like the fifth starter level or fourth fifth starter, honestly, level he was in 19. Um, he's a guy that for his entire career, when you look at his numbers, definitely has the numbers to be a very adequate uh, fourth or fifth starter. So it seems like he's going to be able to get it done for the Phillies. We'll have to see over time. Um, his career stats are a 4.06 and 890.2 innings pitch and a 1.28 whip. So that's definitely fourth or fifth starter numbers. Uh, where obviously Marcus Stroman, the Mets definitely have the advantage in the matchup here yet again. But Marcus Stroman hasn't pitched in a full calendar year. So we're going to have to see what he's able to do. He actually has a 3.76 and 849.1 inning. So it's not as far off a 1.29 whip as people think. But I think Chase Anderson's a guy who'll really be able to keep the Phillies in this game. I think this game, having uh, the Phillies' fifth starter and Stroman, who hasn't pitched in a year, has a chance to be a higher scoring game. Uh, this game, uh, I will actually throw a prediction out there for the middle game. I'll go 7-5 to five Phillies just because you have... A fourth starter, I would say Anderson will probably give up uh, three or four. And then you have the bullpen come in. The Mets have a very good offense. I would be surprised if we don't give up any runs against the Mets. Um, obviously, like the bullpen did against the Braves. So I think you have something happen there. So I'll go seven to five Phillies in that second game. Anderson will pitch a good three, four runs of a five or six inning, keep the Phillies in the game just as you want your fifth starter to do like he's done most of his career. And then Stroh, I just see him struggling a little bit in his first game back simply because he hasn't pitched in a full calendar season, which is just to be expected. Um, when it comes to the game on Wednesday, that is going to be David Peterson versus Alan Nola. Or Aaron Nola. Alan Nola. Uh, Aaron Nola. Aaron Nola, obviously... Uh, came out and pitched a very good game in opening day against the Braves. Uh, the only mistake was the Pablo Sandoval pinch hit home run, who actually is over a 300 career pinch hitter. Uh, David Peterson's one of the better young lefties in baseball since coming up with the Mets uh, last season. They're very high on him, and they like how he's a very good location a wizard. Uh, when it comes to his stuff in 10 games thus far, he's 6-2 and two with a 3.44 and a 1.21 whip in almost 50 innings pitched at 49.2 he was picked 20th overall so they know they got some good stuff out of him he's a very good location artist and specialist uh, with some solid uh, off-speed pitches so I think he's a guy that you definitely want to watch out for but if the Phillies especially guys like McCutcheon um, who have been known to hit lefties Reese Hoskin and JT Real Muto have been known to take advantage of lefties are able to do that in that game we have the advantage of the pitching matchup I would say in the third game so I think that game it's going to go to the Phillies, which is 4.05 Eastern on Wednesday, April 7th. So the first game's a 50-50 split because you got DeGrom tonight going against Matt Moore, but the Mets have no baseball um, game shape legs under them yet. They haven't played yet because the series got postponed, the whole series, against the Nationals due to the COVID protocol. That's why it's a 50-50 split for me. So if that ends up being a loss, I think the Stroman and Anderson game is really uh, even in the pitching matchup because if you look at those guys' career numbers, are actually a lot closer than you would envision just off the cuff. And then Stroh hasn't even pitched in an entire baseball season. So I think that game is going to be, like I said, 7-5 Philly. I think this other game with Peterson and Anderson in the final game of the series is going to be a lot more low scoring on Wednesday, which again, remember, is at 4.05. So as people are getting out of work, it'll probably be the second inning, or if you get out of work at 4, right as you get out of work, you can throw the game on your radio and listen to it on the way home. 
I think that game's expected to be low scoring, and I think it will. I'm going to go. I was just say three to two, but I feel like it's going to be more four to two. Phillies in that game. I think uh, Nola will pitch a good six to seven innings yet again, and then Peterson will be able to pitch a very good five. No, I would say five and two thirds on to into the sixth inning, um, potentially even seven himself. And then I think the Phillies might be able to get some off of one of the guys in the Mets bullpen, um, with how they hit, um. With how they've been uh, hitting this season, I think they're due to actually be able to get something off of a bullpen where a lot of the runs they got in the Braves series were by forcing um, good at-bats against starters or forcing walks against the bullpen. Um, I think it's time to obviously have them get some hits against some top bullpen pitchers, which the Braves' top bullpen lefties did dominate the Phillies in that series. So I think that's what they're going to do in this series, and specifically in this game, so they'll be able to get a 4-2 to two victory. I hope everyone enjoyed this series preview to the Phillies and Mets. So I see them winning this series uh two game uh, by winning the series with winning two games definitely on Tuesday and Wednesday and then tonight's games are very much 50-50 split just due to the fact that yes it's DeGrom versus Moore they have the big hefty advantage there but the Mets haven't even played yet the Phillies have the advantage of having baseball under their legs at least to start this season so again please like comment and subscribe try and hit 130 by the end of this week at 125 right now I hope everyone enjoyed this preview of Phillies and Mets series have a great safe and pleasant week and enjoy the baseball everybody peace out